Okay. And I'm gonna move this about this way. Do so. I need to look at you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because mentally I'm so creative and like my mind is very vivid um, I think that has kept me above water as far as society's acceptance is concerned because mm -hmm. on the forefront when you see me they expect to me to be this really really dope cool like you know oh she's really artistic like oh she's like mad cool like let's bring her let's invite her da, 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 da. but it's like when I get there it throws everybody off because my mindset and the things I talk about and the things that interest me is not what they were expecting me to talk about and that's not what they brought me there for. Mm -hmm. So it, um, like I have the, the mindset, like on the outside I'm very aesthetically pleasing but on the inside it's nothing people expect and so I always find myself trying to explain myself all the time and I'm never really understood like that and it really bothers me because I yearn for being understood so and I think oh, go ahead. no I just I think that's where I'm finding more of myself as I get older in this day and time because I'm realizing that not everyone is going to and um, I just have to deal with that I just made a caption about that today like let me show you let me see what was it something similar not exactly the same but it was like along the lines um, I said, I was like, don't you think it's weird how so many different versions of you exist in people's minds? To some people, I'm outgoing, loud, and the girl that never shuts up, which is very true. Um, some see me as really shy and awkward. Um, some see me as very soft-spoken and kind-hearted. Some see me as lazy. Some see me as hardworking and never sitting. But needless to say, with all people who have encountered, you will realize that they view you, you're completely you're viewed different in everyone's eyes basically um and for the rest of your life opinions and assumptions will always be made about you and you can't control that mm -hmm. um so you know i have to i'm, I'm, I'm dealing with it as you speak <laughs> understanding that i will not always be understood what's one thing that you wish people knew about you like what's one misunderstood thing that you wish people just like got or like wouldn't ask you about um the term being um, like I really want people to know that I'm really down to earth and I'm understanding. I'm literally one of those people whom like I've never I've never had I've always wished that I could find a friend that was like me because I feel like in every friend or any type of situation I've ever had I have done my best to give my all to it. Just mm -hmm. to prove to you that I am here, really a good person. Mm -hmm. And um, in today's world, you know, social media and technology is so prominent that most people are like this all day. 
this is this is what we do and how we communicate we could be sitting on the same couch and i won't say a word to you but i'll text you you know mm -hmm. what i mean so it's like by doing that they are only able to they think they understand you by pictures and captions but that's you're only putting out to the world what you want people to see so it's like they are from that information they're only able to gauge and assume what they think they know about you and so because of that i think that's why in social media i try to be as vulnerable as possible and appropriately at the same time to allow people to know that i'm not just because i may look good and know how to make things look good does not mean that i think i'm better than you or that i'm going to walk in and be looking at you down my nose or right. like if i follow you and you only have three followers. If I follow you and I see you in the street, I am going to, hey, hey, girl, how you doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> Instead of looking at her, you know how girls do yeah. when they walk, and I do it too, everybody does it, it's natural. But you know when you walk into the room and you kind of like, you kind of look at all girls, kind of like think, assess. you kind of assess mm -hmm. like, okay, is she on my level, am I allowed to speak to her? Or is she too much, like is she, does she, is she, does she think she's a higher level than me? If so, I'm just not gonna speak to her kind of thing you know but in reality when you actually go and speak to some of these people I do it all the time some of them are cold as shit and they really think that they are up like that that girl because they have that many followers but you live around the corner come on now yeah. so it's like you know that kind of thing but it's just like when you actually talk to people you realize that they're just as scared as you are mm -hmm. it's just they were afraid to speak first that's all and when you do actually speak they're like whoa I can talk I can be normal I can speak to people and I just um yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. let me draw, man. <laughs> Get it down. Um, what is the most challenging thing you've gone through? Chow. Um, I. Um. I'm gonna say not being able to no okay it was a breakup I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna say it fuck it so it was a breakup I dated a guy for seven years and it was a lot um, and it was from pretty much the beginning of high school through maybe like two-ish to three-ish years of college. And it was like, we kind of like grew up together almost. And when I was younger, I thought he was my cousin. But when we got older, we realized he was just good family friends. And I was like, well, you kind of cute. <laughs> and so, you know, things kind of like, you know, took off from there and we were just always together. But he uh, was, he had a minor mental illness and he was diagnosed with when he was a kid. And due to it, I had a lot of uh, repercussions. Like I was the back, I was the person he used to release his energies on. And I guess because I was so close to him, and you know, it produced a lot of insecurities in me. I think that's a lot of the reason why I'm who I am too, of being so much of a pushover and just not standing up for myself. Because during those years of my life, those were I was most vulnerable and becoming a young lady. And all I knew was to be a girlfriend. That's all I knew, and all I knew was that, okay, like once you get past a, a year at an age like that, you're thinking you're gonna marry the guy. So all I'm doing is trying to figure out to do anything to make him happy. Like if I have to change myself, if I need to work out more, work out less, like, you know, if I need to talk this way, hang out with these kind of people, because this is what they said and his opinion matters and that's it. Like, you know, so that was, that was what I was doing and, you know, some of the things that I like to do, he didn't like to do. I remember I shaved the side of my head. He stopped talking to me for a month. So he told me he wasn't cute. Um, he, used to, he used to say like really like low blow things. And I used to believe it because it came from him. And you know how like if someone completely like a stranger on the street could come up to you and say that you're really pretty. And while it, you know, it's nice for them to say it, if it doesn't come from someone who matters, sometimes you don't feel it. Right. You know what I mean? For sure. So if he was to say something really, really nice, I would believe it till the end of time. If he would say something really, really bad, I would believe it till the end of time. Mm. And because it was so repetitive and the only thing I really heard and the main person I cared about and it was coming from him, I believed it. Um, so it, um, going through that, 
and now to this day and time I'm realizing three years later I am trying to get back in the courting game with guys and I always find myself like in a group of guys I always go for the ugly one because I know that I don't have to worry about if he sees flaws in me mm. if that makes sense because it makes me feel a little bit better about my insecurities because I, that's what that's where I get weird that's where I get socially awkward because I'm trying so hard to make sure everything goes okay and I'm trying so hard that I don't smile too hard because my teeth are kind of not it you know um, so yeah, going through that was my hardest thing because literally in everyday life, like when it comes to my job or making new friends with people or anything, it's just, it's hard. Yeah. And because I never had closure with that person, we had an argument in July of three years ago and he said, bye Sarah. And that was legit the last time we had any communication. It was almost as if he was never, he never existed. And it was weird because I had to deal with the the end of it on my own. I never had a I never had a chance to communicate the end of the you know situation. Like it was just like you know it just ended. And so because of that, it just left a lot of questions and like you know things in my head. And I had to answer them for myself. And I didn't give myself the best answers evidently because now I'm still insecure about a lot of things. And I'm, I'm going through it right now. That. And um, maybe with within my immediate family, um, like the five of us, my two, my parents, and then my brother and sister. Mm -hmm. um, amongst my uncle and aunt and all of their kids, we were the ones who were the most financially inclined. So I always felt a little bit inferior compared to a lot of other people because I was never the one, like I could never afford a car still can't really afford a car. My parents couldn't buy me one. My parents couldn't afford for me to go to school. I had to pay for it myself. Um, I, was, I always felt like I was two steps behind everyone, even the people that were the same age as me. And it always made me feel, it made me so reclusive. So I, I never really had friends like that growing up because I was always afraid to expose the real what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, I think a lot of it just had to do with just bad relationships with people. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that was a lot, right? It's a mouthful. Girl, shut up! No, no. <laughs> um.